Hey what is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the brand new card from Nvidia and this is the GTX 1050 Ti. And the one I've got here is MSI's GTX Gaming X, so the 1050 Ti Gaming X. And this graphics card aims to please those that want to play at 1080p, although as you'll see from some benchmarks later it can just about handle 1440p in some titles. And the sub £200, sub $200 graphics card market is very tight. At the moment we've got many to choose from. We've got the RX 460, 470 and in some cases even the RX 480. And then on the Nvidia side you're pretty much looking really at a 1050 or what we've got here which is the 1050 Ti with the GTX 1060 sitting slightly above the £200 mark at least at the time of filming. So, which graphics card should you go for, and is this one any good? Well, it all starts with a closer look at the card itself. And in this case, it's a very nicely well-designed card. I have to say that I really do like the Gaming X, both on their higher-end cards and on their lower-end cards. In this case, the cooler features two fans. They're very large. They're not as large as they are on the 1070 and 1060 and the larger big-boy graphics cards but it's going to fit in more systems as a result and because the amount of power the graphics card is going to use is lower you shouldn't really notice much difference in cooling performance as this does do a very very good job. In terms of the I.O. though you will find that we have a slightly reduced I.O. compared to some higher end graphics cards like the 1070, 1060 or the RX 480 in that we've only got three ports. We've got HDMI 2.0 with support for HDCP 2.2, a display port, and then if you just wanna go for something a little bit more old school, then we do have a DVI socket as well for hooking up to pretty much any mainstream display. Moving around the back, no backplate is to be found here, and this is going to be very similar to pretty much every other 1050 Ti because at this price point, it's not really a big deal. We've got a six pin power connector at the top as this really doesn't require too much power at all. And then also on the top we've got an MSI logo that glows with a white LED and then a series of LEDs on the top that glow red. And you can customize these a little bit in software but they only really have a breathing effect, a solid effect or a flashing effect. You don't get any fancy effects that you will find on high end cards. But overall I really do like the design and it will fit well in pretty much any system that you don't mind having a red graphics card in. So now that the design of the card is out of the way, we can start to talk about performance. Now the 1050, not the 1050 Ti, features two gigabytes of VRAM, whereas this one, the 1050 Ti, features four. Whereas to make things a little bit more complicated, the RX 460 features either four or two, and then the RX 480 and 470 either feature four or eight. So how much VRAM do you need? Well, it's going to depend on the resolution and the games that you are playing. Generally speaking, 4GB is going to be plenty unless you're playing at high resolutions. And while 2GB might be cutting it in some titles, on an RX 460, a 2GB card is probably the way I would recommend, as you're going to be turning down settings anyway, and you're not really going to see much benefits of having higher end textures if they don't fit in the graphics card and you're getting a load of stutter anyway. But here, the 4GB frame buffer is probably about right, and I didn't have any problems throughout my testing. My testing was pretty much 90% done at 1080p, although for Gears we did touch upon 1440p and 4K, just to demonstrate what would happen if you tested these cards at this price point. And bringing in the benchmarks now, you'll see that it's pretty much as we expect. The 460 is a cheaper card, it doesn't perform as well as the 1050 Ti. And the 1050 Ti definitely has a decent amount of performance gain versus the 460. There's normally between 10 and 20 frames a second in it, though if we look at some DX12 titles you will see that that gap definitely does start to close. AMD definitely are leading the way in terms of having better support for Vulkan and DirectX 12, or at least you're probably going to see more frames a second and the cards do run a little bit more efficiently. But the question is, are either of these cards worth buying? Well, as you can see now from this benchmark, clearly if you do want to run something at 4K, it's not going to happen. But at 1440p in some titles, especially if you do lower the settings, the 1050 Ti should do the job absolutely fine. But don't go pairing it with some stupidly high-end monitor because it's just not going to be able to drive it. 
but what the 1050 Ti does do is set a very nice middle ground for 1080p, very light 1440p gaming. And to be honest, if you pretty much give this card to anyone, they're going to be pretty happy with it, as long as you're not trying to overdo what is capable with this card. If you want to play any esports titles, then it doesn't matter what card you're going to have, they're going to blitz it. You might be thinking, well, why is there no benchmarks at all? Well, because I only needed to do one. With the RX 460, using the new Crimson Relive drivers and having the Relive setting on, which records my gameplay, I was still getting an average at pretty much ultra settings in CSGO of 195 frames a second. So that is why we don't need to necessarily look at the benchmarks on esports titles, because all of them are going to blitz through them at 1080p, no questions asked. And at 1440p, again, you shouldn't really have any problems whatsoever. So if you literally just want to play esports titles, get yourself a 460 and try and make it the cheapest one that you can. Because to be honest with you, this Strix for Gigabyte Edition really isn't worth it when you think how close in price it is to the 1050. Which brings us along to the 1050. This card is going to be best if you want to play titles like Battlefield 1 and some higher end titles at 1080p. The 460 is going to do an admiral job, and most people won't have too many problems, but if you really do want to be playing the latest games and not just some, you're not just someone that just wants to play PC games, you really do want to see some serious benefits, a 1050 is a good choice. But if you really do want the best price per performance, you are going to have to spend a little bit more and you're going to have to get something like the 480, which is still my graphics card of the year, as it delivers unbelievable performance at a pretty... Well, pretty unbelievable price, really, when you think that the 1060 at launch was around about £80 more, and in a lot of titles, the 480 does outperform it. And so, there we go. I hope this video has helped you make some informed buying decisions. If you don't mind lowering the settings, or you're only playing esports titles and you're playing at 1080p, the 460 is all that you need. But if you do want to push the 1080p gaming, a 1050 Ti is an even better choice, as long as you're not paying too much money and you don't start to eat towards that 480 money. And the 480 is the best card price performance. If you don't mind saving up a little bit longer, that card will last you longer and will enable you to have higher frame rates and will definitely unlock resolutions like 1440p. If this video has helped you, please let me know, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. A massive thank you to MSI for supplying this review sample. This card does actually win the Top Purchase Award, as long as you get it at a decent price. It's very difficult with graphics card reviews, because they do start to clash here and there in terms of pricing, because they're always moving about. If you do want to see more videos like this, hit the eye in the top right hand corner, you can see more graphics card reviews and the review of this FreeSync monitor. If you do want to look at FreeSync, then of course you will need an AMD card. I'll leave the link for the 1050 Ti product uh, in the description below, the Amazon link. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.